Garrett Lynch, what's going on? What's going on, Michael? So it's interesting uh, how to see how people kind of get into the business. And as we all know, the, the first deal is the absolute critical way to get in there because once you get your first deal done, the second and third kind of follow automatically. We call that the law of the first deal. We talk about that a lot. Uh, but there's all, there's a bit of a, a different mindset with people as they approach the syndication business. And some people kind of, they stick their toe into it and they do maybe a small deal, a duplex or a 10 unit, you know, and they kind of scrape things together and they get into the game, which is awesome. Then there's others though, who kind of, they have a bigger idea in their mind. They treat it more like a business and, and you can see the difference by the way they approach things. For example, the latter one, they may put up a website or they might actually you know, uh, put an office together or they may immediately look for a partner or they start putting a platform together or something. They approach it differently. And I'm wondering what your thoughts are around you know, what's a better idea. Do you kind of you know, do it as a side gig and you kind of treat it as a hobby and slowly ramp it up? Or should you approach it more as something like I'm building a business from day one? Well, I don't think there's really a, you know, a right or wrong approach if you're getting into real estate, but if you do want to want to create a business out of it, you have to think about who you're serving. Okay. Who are you adding value to? Because your income from that will, will directly relate to who you're adding the value to, right? So if you start to involve, you know, investors, banks, uh, your residents, you're increasing their standard of living. All of those touch points have value that you can add that directly relates to the amount of income that you're going to receive. And I used to think about that. I'm like, how do how do we get how are we getting paid? You know, the amount that we're getting paid in doing this, it's just because we're adding so much value to those different groups. And so, you know, if you're doing just like a two flat on the side and, and on your own, you're only adding value to maybe your residents and, and maybe a small bank at a small level. Versus you go in and buy a 300 unit complex. Now you have a large staff, you have a property management company, you have, you know, a lot of dollars out there in debt on the debt side. Uh, you have investors, you have a lot more that's happening. And so, so there's, you know, looking at it from the a microscope, I've, I've been in both seats Um and it's, it's interesting on both sides, for sure. Well, I mean, I was kind of with a former variety. I kind of stuck my foot into it and did everything on my own. Uh, it was a 12-unit apartment building that, uh, that, we, that we did back in 20, 2011. You know, and, and I, I watch people now having this on the podcast and having, having the book, and I see how different people get into it. And I just want to say, all paths lead to the same destination, which is first deal, second deal, third deal, quitting job, right? It all, it all leads there. But what my observation is that... The people who treat it more of a business, they have a bigger vision in place and they're more willing to invest in their business early on. So for example, in the early days, I would say, oh my gosh, look at all these asset management fees. It's pure profit, right? Because I didn't have any overhead and I didn't want to spend any money on your overhead. It was, I was just doing everything. But what I realize now is that me doing everything held me back from really scaling. And I think you were, you were talking about impact. The impact you can make and a 12-unit building is markedly different than, than 300 units, both on your investors, your tenants, the bank, and all that, all those things as well. And I find it interesting that people who treat it more as a business scale a lot faster because they're willing to spend money in the business. They're willing to hire that virtual assistant. They're willing to in, maybe invest in content. They're going to go out and find one or more joint venture partners. They're already thinking that they are at the helm of a multifamily of a multi-million dollar business, which all syndicators are, whether you are the hobbyist and you're just starting small or you're going in big, the point is anyone who gets a syndication is at the helm of a multi-million dollar business. And I think you need to think this way. I think it sets you up for more success, helps you scale faster and in the process because you're surrounding yourself with people, helps you avoid some larger mistakes. So for example, aligning yourself with a mentor or investing in your education, right? If you're kind of a hobbyist, you're like, I'm a, a do-it-yourselfer, you're going to figure it out. You're going to make mistakes that can take longer. And so I just, I find that people who invest in themselves are willing to reinvest the proceeds or invest in their company are more successful faster. So it's just an observation I have. Music.